Good morning and welcome to the National Basketball Arena. We're about to get underway in the first game of the morning. It's the under 16B All Island Schools League final. Manor House versus Kalosh de Breed, Con Dorkin. I'm joined for this one by Basketball Island's development officer Paul Carr. Paul, morning to you. Morning, Matt. Great crowd in this morning for this game. I would say we're going to have a fantastic game of basketball. It's great to see such a huge crowd at the school game today. As you mentioned, Paul, some of the B and C games bring some of the bigger crowds, schools that are not used to be in the finals so much, and it's extremely loud here this morning. It's Manor House looking to attack the basket with their number 10, Madeline Duplo. And we're going to get our first foul of the game. And it's going to go on Cluster Breeze. Number 12, Alison Mark. <laughs> Can't connect in the first two free throws and rebounded by Abby O'Keefe. Katie Flanagan can't find O'Keefe. Paul, often these games, teams find it difficult to get into. Uh, I'm not sure if either of these have played in the final. I can't remember seeing them too much, but what kind of game do we expect to see it uh, between these two? Yeah, normally these games, especially with the bigger crowds, uh, are very nervy to start. As you've seen there, two missed free throws and uh, a poor turnover by Costa Breeze. It just takes a while to get settled into these games. Payne with the first shot, Duplo can't put in the rebound. And it's O'Keefe forward to the basket in the first score of the game for the captain. Avin Dunn, 2-0 across the breed. Eight minute quarters we're playing in the lead. So 6.30 to go. Three point shot is up but off from Brady. But again, Duplo grabs the rebound and scores. She's fouled, she'll go to the line for a bonus shot. And Paul, good start from Duplo, she's shown to be extremely athletic. Yeah, definitely, I think that's something that uh, Manor House are going to have to be wary of using today as an offensive threat. She's much longer and more athletic than most players on the court, so if she can get them offensive rebounds and go back up just like that, they're going to be in for a high-scoring game. Free throw is off. We've got two fouls on Alison Mark for Cross the Breed. And all the way to the basket for the first score of the game for Cross the Breed is Katie Flanagan. Sorry, second score of the game. It's Katie Flanagan. 4 2, 6, 11 to go. We have a jump ball here. And on the possession arrow, it is going to be Cross the Breed's ball. Sorry, Manor House ball. Both teams playing in some kind of blue. It's confusing me there. Brady tries to get the basket, can't finish. And cross the breed on the fast break with the captain Dunn. O'Keefe has the ball stolen away by Brady. That pass goes astray. Abby O'Keefe all the way to the basket, can't get it. And two free throws will be called. Fairly frenetic start in the moment. Both teams just struggling to find the score in touch. Keith makes one of two, and it's Duplo with the rebound. Deep three just bounces out from Brady, but she seems to want to shoot the ball from deep pause, so obviously can make a few of those. Yeah, and uh, especially 
in these games you can see uh, players on the defensive end always seem to sag off and let them players take the shots. You have to start taking them in order to get the defense out and make, make more space inside. Nice pass inside, but Abby O'Keefe can't score. It'll be jump ball, and this time it will be close to breed ball from the end line. Done with a shot, can't make it, rebounded by Brady. It's under pressure but gets a nice outlet pass to Young. Young finds Duplo, she's into the basket, can't finish this time. Grabs her own rebound, zips off, we're going to get a jump ball. And it will be Manor House ball this time. Duplo getting into a lot of very good positions, um, just not getting it to fall just yet, but uh, I would keep an eye on her for the rest of the game. Once that shot starts falling, she's going to be very dangerous. Flanagan to the basket, that one rolls out. So they'll get another go here, end line ball to Colosse de Breed. 4.38 to go in the first quarter, 5-2 Colosse de Breed lead. Abby O'Keefe looks to get into the key. She's met by Dukla, but nice finish off the backboard by O'Keefe. Extends the lead, 7-2. to two. Just a bit of miscommunication there between Dukla and Young. Leads to the fast break opportunity for Katie Flanagan, but she can't finish, and it's stolen away by Emily Brady. And we're going to get a foul here. It's going to go on Closter Breeze, number 9. Aveen Dunn, that's going to be her first personal foul. Young finds some space all the way to the basket. Again, can't quite finish, but a nice move from Juliana Dunn. And Duplo does enough to get the ball from the end line. It'll stay in Manor House possession. Shot from Rachel Allen is short. Manor House, you mentioned Duplo, she's been getting to the basket, haven't been able to finish. A couple of nice moves from Julia Ali Young, but they could probably do with the ball going in the basket at this point, just for a bit of confidence. Yeah, definitely. And even there, uh, Duplo sent a nice screen for Young to get her some space going to the basket, but she needs to also roll off them screens and attack the basket and look for them easy dump in inside for the easy scores. A travel violation there, so it will be Manor House ball with a chance to cut into this lead. It's trailed by five at the moment, 3.45 to go in the first quarter. Brady off the screen from Duplo, she fires up a long three. Again, that one doesn't go good pass. To Sarah Buller, and Buller scores and is fouled. She'll get a chance to go to a free throw line for a three point play. The foul's gone on. Number 15, Emily Brady. That's going to be her first personal foul. I'm going to have a timeout called by Krista Reed from Manor House to talk things over with 3.29 to go. So 3.29 to go in the first quarter of this under 16B All-Island Schools League final. Two free throws 
coming for Sarah Buller. Paul, first time out by uh, Calesta's American Krista Reed, coaching Manor House. What kind of things she's, would she be talking about to try and settle her team down? I think she's just telling them get the ball in the basket. Uh, a lot of times when they're missing them shots or taking some some long threes, Foster Breeds are getting the rebounds and getting out in the fast break, and that's where they're getting a lot of their scores. And that's exactly what Madeline Dukla does. Nice step through, gets the basket, this time with a nice finish off the glass. She follows it up with a block with the end line ball for Closher Breed. 9-4, three minutes to go in the first quarter. They've been done with a long three, which is nothing but nets. 12-4 they lead. Inside to Dupla. And she's foul but it'll be before the shot to be end line ball for the fourth team foul across the breeds the next one will go into penalty Dukes are on the baseline but nowhere to go for Brady back inside to Akutta but it's turned over and eventually into the hands of Ma. We've been done for three. And back to back three point shots for Kalosh de Breed. A little bit of trouble here, Paul, for Manor House. Yeah, they need to get some scores on the board fairly quickly or this game's going to run away from them. And that's not what you want to see. That three point shot is blocked. And again, you talk about the fast break. And here comes Kalosh de Breed with two off the glass from Sarah Buller. And all of a sudden, in the last minute, they put eight points up and it's 17 to four with two minutes to go in the first quarter. Deep three in and out from Brady. They need a couple of those to drop or need some kind of scores quickly. And again, the fast break. And we're gonna get a foul call. And it's gonna go on number nine, Julia Young. Paul, the things you talk about there, the fast break. At the moment, Manor House is unable to slow them down. Yeah, and defensively it comes from a bit of communication. What's happening is you have two players going towards the ball and leaving the far side wide open and the pass is coming over the top for the easy layup. They need to communicate. One person needs to run to the board, one person needs to go to the ball, and that way they have someone back there minding that pass. Katie Flanagan makes one of two. And that hooked up, gets the rebound. Manor House in desperate need of a score here. With Juliale Young, she'll take the free throw line, pull up jump shot, but doesn't go. Nothing really dropping for them at the moment, but a couple of baskets inside for Duplo, but that will help as Klosh de Breed turn the ball over. One thirty-four to go in the first quarter. Emily Payne from Manor House. Gets the high screen from Brady. We get a foul here, so this will be a chance for two shots. Then penalty. So Emily Emily Payne will go to the line for two shots. <laughs> Referee's just putting it from the end line, but table buzzed in, so it will be two shots we talked about. One of two for Payne, and rebound secured for Kloster Breed. And it'll be Katie Flanagan gets it forward to Dunn. Flanagan, shot off the high screen, doesn't go, rebounded by Brady. And this time, Juliana Young gets a chance to go away the hoop, and she's fouled for two shots. And Paul, a bit more of what Manor House need to get back in the game here. Yeah, a lot better from Young there getting out in transition and taking it strongly to the hoop. 
Um, hopefully she can knock down these free throws now and get themselves back in it. Big crowd in the building for Manor House. Desperate to see their team get back in this. It was a slow first quarter. That one just bobbles out. But 103 to go in this quarter. They trail by 13, but it's by no means beyond them just yet. Plenty of time left in the game. Can't make the second, and this time it's across the breeze. Good defense from Brady. Creates a turnover. Young back to Brady. Gonna get another foul here, so it'll be another chance to go to the line for two shots, but they need to start hitting these. Yeah, I think that's five free throws that they've missed already. Um, maybe even more. Um, you need to make sure that you make teams count. We're going to get a timeout here for Klosch de Breed. We'll be back with you shortly. Welcome back, 52 seconds to go in the first quarter. Gloucester Breed been the hot shooting team here so far in the first quarter. They lead 18 to five. But Paul, you wouldn't say Manor House haven't had their chances, they just haven't been able to finish. Yeah, Dupla has missed a couple of shots on around the rims. Free throws have, have really been a struggle for them today. So hopefully now they'll settle down and start making some of these shots in the second quarter, um, and that'll make a, a more interesting game. As and they get the roll there on the second free throw for Emily Brady. 18-6, just under 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. Nice move, find a bit of space from Kate Flanagan. O'Keefe, she can't finish and rebounded by Dukla. She gets it forward to Young. Young with a nice crossover, finds a bit of space, gets away the basket and again, another foul going to the basket. A bit of foul trouble here for Klosch Breed. Number 14, Sarah Bullet is already on three fouls and that foul is going to go against number eight Ema Quinn which will be her first but again free throws causing a little bit of an issue here for Manor House both missed but Dupli does a good job of fighting for the rebound and it's knocked out of bounds so it will be Manor House ball. Dukla gets her own bad pass back to her but can't finish at the hoop. Young misses. Dukla rebound. Again, another miss. <laughs> and I suppose we really saw the big problem there for Manor House in that little play there. A couple of good, op easy opportunities at the basket they couldn't quite finish. Yeah, and uh, you have to make them count, especially when you're struggling from the free throw line. Uh, they had two or three opportunities there where they could have just got the easy basket. Now they have to go to the line, and uh, hopefully they can make one or two of these. They can make the first. One of two for Anomi at Putta. She opens the scoring account here, so slowly chipping away, 18-7. 13 seconds left in the first quarter. Again, another great long-range shot for me, McQuinn, just inside the three-point line. But they've really shot the ball well in this first quarter. With two seconds, they have to get it up. They don't be turned over, but don't get the shot off in time. So at the end of the first quarter, it's under 16B, All-Ireland League final. 
It's Clos de Breed, 20, Manor House, 7. Welcome back. Ready for action in the second quarter. It's under 16B, All Island Schools League final. It's Kalosh de Breed leading Manhouse 20 to 7. Paul Kalosh de Breed shot the ball really well, but plenty of opportunities for Manor House. Yeah. They'd be looking to change anything in the second in the second quarter or more of the same, but put the ball in the basket. I think uh defense did the made a good switch there just going to the end of the first and they've started off in the 2-3 zone as well here in the second. It means them quick yards that cross your breeze have do have to go in and try score over Dupla and over uh, Akpotar which are both very tall, very athletic so hopefully they can get some turnovers from that and score in, the, in transition. Miss three from Emily, Emily, Emily Payne rather. He's rebounded twice by Dupla, but twice he couldn't put it back in, but end up with end line ball to Manor House. Here is Dupla. Corner two doesn't go for Young. And the fast break, good first pass. Good defense from Payne in the end. Managed to stop Clash to Breed, but turns the ball over, trying to get a quick outlet. It's Katie Flanagan, and she gets fouled. Going to the basket and there'll be two shots. Much better defense there from Payne on the fast break and the transition defense. Going straight back to the rim, getting in position, getting hands up and making a, a difficult shot for Gloucester Breeze on that transition. It's the first foul of the game for number 10, Madeline Dupla. Free throw is good. Katie Flanagan. Emily Payne off the screen from Matt Putter. Payne with a jump shot doesn't go. Rebounded by Duplo. Kicks it back out. To the jump shot for Julia Young doesn't go. And again, rebounded across the breed. And they bring it up the floor with Ma. And a corner jump shot <laughs> is good from Ema, Ema Quinn. And Paul, you have to say, Clash Debris from that kind of range have been exceptional so far. Yeah, they've had a lot of them uh, mid-range twos as well. Even Don had back-to-back -back threes in a key phase in the in the first. So great shooting from Clash Debris. Good comeback score, much needed from Julia Young there. Keeps Manhouse in touch, block shot there as Duplo does a better job of getting out to the sharp shooter e. McQuinn. And we'll have subs coming in for Manor House. Number 12, Rachel Allen is going to come in and give number 11, Emily Payne, a rest. Again, that mid-range jump shot. Aveen Dunn knocks it down. 25-9. Colossal to breed lead. Brady all the way to the basket and she's fouled. She'll go to the line for two shots. Paul, as development officer, you run the uh, pros in schools. 
how much of a of a help is it for Manor House to have one of the top superstars in the country in Crystal Reed coaching them? Oh, it's absolutely fantastic and it's something that's happening all over the country. A lot of uh, the imports from America and from Europe have gone into the schools and been coaching. Uh, I know Manny Payton up in LYAT led uh, St. Union's to a cu cup uh, in the under 16B. So their impact is huge and uh, it's great to see. Great cut to the basket for Emily Brady. And that will please Krista as they cut the lead. 25-11 they lead. Here's Katie Flanagan, guarded by Brady, tries to find a bit of space. Drives the basket and she's fouled. It's Abby O'Keefe that was fouled. I think the foul is going to go to number eight, Anomi Akputta. That's going to be her second foul. Again, makes one of two. 26-11, 5.42 to go in the second quarter. Juliana Young gets her shot partially blocked, but it's out of bounds. And it'll be close to Breed Ball. Nice pass from Cross the Breed. O'Keefe looks to get to the basket. She's called for a travel. Good offensive movement though from Cross the Breed. That's exactly what you want to see in the um, playing against the 2-3 is that high low post action um, and trying to get free just to need to wash their feet next time. Long range two is short from Allen. Duto again. A great job of getting rebounds. And Paul, you have to say like the, the just watching the one positive for Krista Reed that if Duplo can start to put those in, she's getting pl plenty of opportunities and getting a lot of boards. But at what point does it become a bit of a, a bit of a panic for Manor House when, they, when they're not scoring on your 11 points? It, if they continue to make free throws like that, it doesn't become a panic. The issue is is that when they keep getting fouled, they're not making their free throws. They're not making Claude Breach pay. So um, if they can fix their free throw shooting, it's going to be less of a panic. That put that gets the rebound and she's fouled. So the end line ball this time, the third team foul. Again, one from two. The third personal foul on Alison Ma, so she's going to take a break. Four. Foul starting to rack up a little bit there on the scoreboard. We're only five minutes to go in the second quarter and Already two players on three fouls and two players on two fouls. And eventually, after a couple of sighters, Emily Brady makes the first three of the game. Yeah, it's um, a worry for Usher Breeze to have this many fouls this early on, so they need to wash their hands. Um, and I would say if they boxed out a little bit better, they would have less uh, fouls because what's happening is Dupla's giving them second chance opportunities. And we're going to get a timeout. Clash the Breed coach has seen enough. Martin O'Keefe, he wants to talk things over. Leading 26 15.
So 4.41 to go in the second quarter of this under-16B All-Island Schools League final. Katie Flanagan, a good pass, and Quinn in the corner to an open Dunn. She's already made a couple of threes, can't make that one, but well rebounded inside from O'Keefe, and she puts it up and in. Puts the lead back up to 13. It's been cut on a couple of quick baskets by Manor House, inside, inside to Duplo. And she's going to get called for the travel. Flanagan to Quinn. Good defense from Manor House, put her under pressure. And we've got to get a jump ball, and on possession now, it'll be Manor House ball. Young looks to set things up for Manor House. Here's Brady. She made her last three. She's going to let another one go. That one had a feet on the line, but just bounced out. Again, fast break here as Quinn looks to go to the basket, and she's fouled by Young. That's going to be Young's third foul for Manor House. A bit of frustration, I think, there from Young. She's uh, not having things her way today. She's normally one of the top scorers. She was held scoreless in the in the first quarter, and you can see it when she's losing the ball or when the scores aren't falling. She's very aggressive trying to get the ball back, and that's when you end up giving away fa cheap fouls. Krista Reed just sending... Holly Stanley to the subs bench below us. I presume she'll be checking in. For Young, the next opportunity, free throw made. Now we'll make that sub. And it is Juliana Young that will come out. With three personal fouls. Still a long time to go, 3.42 to go in the second quarter. And two high double screens. Brady <laughs> makes the three. And probably lucky Paul she had a wide open player under the hoop. Yeah, probably not the best option to take, but uh, it went in, so she will get away with that one from her coach. And that's two threes she's made, two of her last three. So confidence is starting to come from Emily Brady, rebounded by Duplo. With a chance to get it into single figures here, but they turn that over. Good defense from Duplo. And here comes Brady. This time she does make the pass forward to Allen, who can't finish. Allen will get a second goal, and this time she's fouled. She'll go to line for two shots. Third personal foul on Abby O'Keefe. So three of their starting five fall now on three fouls. Yeah, again, they just need to make sure they get their rebounds. And the the, the problem they're having is Dupla's cleaning up the boards and she's going up and she's going up and then they're getting frustrated that they can't get the rebounds and they're trying to, uh, to get a block and it's just not going to work with Dupla's that size, that height and that athletic. Rachel Allen, obviously the key for Manor House to get her to the free throw line. She's the first person in the game to knock down two for two. And we're going to get a travel here, and we're down to single figures here. Nine point lead, 2.43 to go. And play on there. We thought we'd get a timeout, but we're not. Coach Martin O'Keefe thought he had a second one, but he's called both his timeouts already so we'll have to play through this high screen deep deep three from Brady this time doesn't go at put does a good job of getting hands on the rebound and it will stay Manor House ball from the end line I think Christina Reed has made a very smart coaching decision about going into that 2-3 ever since Gloucester Bridge has really really struggled to get some scores on the board this time a good touch from Duplo inside and the lead is down to seven 
Open three. Bounces out. Nice pass to Allen. Allen just tried to make the extra pass. And it was knocked out of bounds. Might be better off going up herself there, but good vision from Emily Dunn to make the quick pass down the floor. And now it's Manor House that are looking to push the fast break a little bit more. And Duplo again with back-to-back -back hoops. And we're down to five. They're starting to fall for her now. Quinn to Flanagan. Flanagan tries to find a bit of space. Tries to scoop it through. Doesn't go. Well rebounded by Yusuf. This time rebounded by Allen. She looks the pass. Gets it forward to Brady. Brady will pull up for three. That one's going to be a little short. And we're going to get Emily Payne coming back in. And she'll give Holly Stanley a break. Done. To Quinn. Three-point shot is up from Flanagan. That one bounces out. And rebounded by Payne and she's fouled. So we're going to walk the length of the floor for two shots. That's the third foul on number eight, Ema Quinn. That's now four players for Cloche de Breed on three fouls. have definitely found their rhythm for the free throw line. That's their last four made. Emily Payne knocks down two for two with a three-point game. And that's going to be a turnover. One twelve to go in the second quarter. Dunn to Payne. Back to Dunn. Does a good job of breaking the pressure here. Two high ball screens again from Matt Cookto and Duplo. Matt Cookto. We're lucky to get away with a foul there, cross the breed. But it, ball is in the hands of the captain, Avian Dunn. In need of a score here, but good stand from Duplo. And rebound blocked by Allen and into the hands of Payne. 38 seconds. This would tie the game up, and it does. So Emily Dunn with a deep three. Tied at 29 apiece. And Paul, some come back here in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, unbelievable uh, from Manor House. <laughs> Emily, uh, them three pointers have just been fantastic from so deep, deep range. But the defense has just been incredible. They've really struggled, Glossary, to get any easy baskets on transition or uh, when they get set up. And they really need to rethink this at halftime and how they're going to break down the 2 3. 17 points in two and a half minutes have brought Manor House. Storming back with Tide with eight seconds to go. Cross to Breed will get one final shot. Done to Flanagan. We've got a shot clock violation with 0.6 to go. Probably not enough time to get it a shot up. Please pass it forward. She does. And we're not going to get it up in time. So it's after the end of a very topsy turvy. But a very exciting first call, uh, first half of the under 16B final. It's Manor House 29, Colosse de Breed 29.
Welcome back here to the National Basketball Arena. Ready to get underway for the start of the under 16B girls All Island Schools League final. It's 29 apiece after Kloster Breed led by as many as 16, I believe, at one point. Paul, just look at the scores there at half time. Who's impressed you? Well, a huge uh, second quarter from Emily Brady. She had 11 points in that uh, second quarter alone uh, to go with her one from the first to get her 12 points overall but she had three threes in that um, in that second quarter so that was fantastic from her on uh, Clausha Bridge uh, even Dunn started the first quarter well she had eight points leading all scores she only got two in the second so she's leading Clausha Bridge with 10 points deep C from Brady falls a little short with Flanagan Good defense from Manor House. Back to Flanagan. She looks to find space. Nice steps too, and a beautiful move. The basket for Katie Flanagan. She opens the count in the second half for Cloche de Breed. And we've done wide open three. It'd be wise not to leave her open too many times. So Brady, after she caught fire as Paul said in that second quarter. We're going to get a foul here. It's going to go on number eight. Akputa, and it's going to be two shots for Abby O'Keefe. Yeah, Martin O'Keefe, coach of Gloucester Bridge, I would say, was telling uh, his girls there to make sure not to leave Emily uh, Brady open again because she's just been a sharpshooter from three today. Second one is not going to count as O'Keefe just stepped over the line there, but it's a three point lead. Colossia Breed off to start again almost here after building up a big lead and an onslaught from Manor House at the end of that quarter. Brought them right back into it. We're going to get a foul here. That's going to go on number 14, Sarah Buller. If it is, that's going to be a fourth foul, I believe. Yep, it is indeed. So we're going to get a sub here. And Yala Usif is going to check back in. And unfortunately, Sarah Bullet is going to have to sit down and watch for a little while here on four personal fouls. Makes second of those. So 32 30, 6 40 to go in the third quarter. Again, nice move from Katie Flanagan to get inside, but Yusuf picks up the loose ball. O'Keefe, nice little dish to Ma, who can't finish, and it eventually picked up by Giuliani Young, and the fouls continue to come by Kalosha Breed. This time it's going to be Yusuf. It's going to be her first foul, I believe. Pain for three is off and rebounded by O'Keefe. Flanagan blocked by Dukla. Chance to break here with Juliana Young. Nice pass and a great finish off the glass by Emily Payne. And we're tied again at 32. Keith to Flanagan. Three is up from Dunn. Again, two on one. This time, Emily Payne can't quite grab hold of it. It's stolen away by Dunn. And we're going to get a travel by Yusuf. But Paul, certainly on the fast break, it's a lot more of Manor House on the fast break rather than Closher Breed that we saw reversal of that in the first quarter. 
Yeah, especially now both teams have actually gone to 2-3 as well, so I would expect you'll see a lot more turnovers, a lot more missed uh, shots and a lot more uh, fast breaks. Again, since struggling early, Madeleine Duplo has really found her touch here, made her last three goals a basket, and she's put her team up for the first time in the game, 34-32. Flanagan, again, nowhere to go. A good job of securing that loose ball by Alison Mann. She's been fouled by 15, Emily Brady. That's going to be her third personal foul, and certainly they can't afford her to get any more. Flanagan, nice looking shot from Flanagan but doesn't count on the fast break, started here with Juliana Young, she goes all the way to the hoop and she's fouled and she'll go to the line for two shots, the second personal foul on Avine Dunn. One from two, good for Young. Three-point lead. Try to be erased by Katie Flynn, but doesn't go. Rebound by Duplo. And Juliana Young again looks to push the pace. This time she pulls up for a long two. And bounces out. Stolen away by Manor House. And again, tough finish this time by Duplo. I think we're going to get a timeout here. We are here. As Coach Martin O'Keefe wants to talk things over, they trail by five with 4.23 to go. So 4.23 to go, five point lead for Manor House. Four huge swings since we saw Clash de Breed up 15 or 17 points, and now they're trailing by five. What are they gonna do to try and steady the ship here a little bit? Uh, it's difficult for them because of that 2-3 uh, the Manor House are, do, uh, are playing. They're settling for the outside shots. The shots aren't falling, and with uh, Dupla and Akaputa are inside for Manor House. They're not really getting any second chance opportunities, so it's a matter of trying to move the ball a bit better, driving, kicking to the corner, instead of driving in against two players, find that player who's free and moving the ball quickly to get the open shot. Yeah, look, just putting the ball on the floor here, struggling to get them in, but they will get two shots here, and it will be Abby O'Keefe that goes to line for two shots, and that's at Putters. First foul. Thought she'd only got one. Well, actually, it's gone against number 12, so it's gone against Rachel Allen. <laughs> and a much needed free throw goes in for Abby O'Keefe. Young, 
to Brady. Brady this time drives the basket, but gets the ball caught behind her back and it's called for a travel. So it'll be Kloshabri's ball. Chance to see if they can break down the 2-3 zone that Paul's talking about. Flanagan gets a high screen from Dunn. And we've got a foul call here. It's going to discuss what's going on. Foul's going on number 10. Madeline Duplo, that's going to be her second foul. So, let's put Manor House in the penalty. So, a little bit of a role reversal here with Manor House picking up fouls in this third quarter. One from two made by Katie Flanagan. 3.42 to go. Brady with a high screen from Duplo. She gets an open look at the three, but can't go. At puts her nearly gets the hand on the rebound, but it's ended up rebounded by Flanagan. And she has Abby O'Keefe under the basket. And again, gets fouled. And it's going to be Emily Brady. That's going to be her fourth foul. And that's a significant foul having Brady on four. She's going to have to sit. And her three-pointers really spread that zone uh, of Klaus and give Dupla the chance to work inside. So it's going to be interesting to see how they work with now that Klaus Abreed sag back into the zone. One for two free throws made. But Emma Quinn and Emily Brady is going to have to take a break here on four fouls. So it's Holly Stanley that's come in for her. Allen inside to Akputta, and there's a foul there. Oh, no, it's called a travel first. And 3 16 to go. Two point lead for Manor House. Quinn to Flanagan. Flanagan looks to find a little bit of space. Nice high post pass to open O'Keefe. Keith to the basket is good. And we're back at the tie game, 37 apiece. Allen to Young. Stolen away. Oh, travel call before the steal. But unfortunate for Gloucester Breed. But Paul, you really see the difference now that Emily Brady's gone out. They look a little bit short of outside shooting. Yeah, definitely, and that's what happens. You can see even when the ball went over to um, to Rachel Allen, the defender who should come out there and uh, contest that shot knew she wasn't going to take that outside three and just sagged back in to stop the ball going inside to Akputar, and uh, that was going to make a huge difference for Gloucester Bridge. Another foul on Manor House. That's going to be the third foul on Duplo. And it'll be two shots. Keith makes short work of those. And it's two point lead for Cluster Breeders. Back into the game comes Emily Payne. Inside to Duplo, but nowhere to go. Good defense from Cluster Breed. Yeah, great double team on Duplo there, making sure she just can get the ball up um, and even get the chance to get the shot away. So the lead continues to change hands. Costa Breed up two. Katie Flanagan, she shows some sweet skills inside to get a bit of space but can't finish. It'll be end line ball to Costa Breed. It's blocked. So they'll get another chance. Two minutes to go in this third quarter. Baseline jump shot is off 
from Quinn. And it will be stolen back by Quinn. Great hustle from her after missing that shot to get back. To grab the rebound. Abby O'Keefe to find space inside, can't get it. Rebounded by Allen. And she gets it into the hands of Emily Payne with 1.39 to go in the third quarter, trailing by two. Juliana Young down the middle, finds a bit of space. That one's going to come up short. Good rebound by Dunn. And Flanagan again looks to cut through the defence. And she's fouled, and that's four fouls on two points. Amazing how much the calls have swung, and the foul's going all the other way now. And now it's Manor House, who's even in more trouble, foul trouble than Cloche de Breed. Yeah, and it's going to be very interesting going into the fourth how the coach manages the foul situation on both teams. Uh, Dupla and uh, Brady on four fouls for Manor House and uh, four fouls for number 14, which is Sarah Bolu, on uh, Cloucester Bridge as well. Juliana Young. She looks to attack quickly, does a nice job there. Evade the defence and she's fouled. Check it into the game. I think for the first time is Victoria Leader, number 14. And she's going to give Madeline Duplo a break. Payne. Allen, she'll take a three. That was just short, but rebounded by Young. Bobbles out. And this time, Cross the Breed have numbers, but. Flanagan didn't see the ball, it's stolen away by Young. Young will pull up at the foul line. Again, doesn't go. Well rebounded by Flanagan. 45 seconds to go in the third quarter. O'Keefe looks to drive baseline, but good defence. Good defence from Manor House. The ball comes off the corner of the backboard and off the back of the head of Juliana Young, so it will stay Colossal Bree ball. three-point shot bounces out from Flanagan but well rebounded by O'Keefe and she'll go to the line for two shots and fouls on number eight Akputta that's going to be her third Both bounce out. Here comes Juliana Young. Nowhere to go. Good defense from Closter Breed. Allen, nice pass to high post. And Emily Payne will take the jump shot short. So 18 seconds to go. And we'll get a sub here as Yusuf comes in. Paul, both teams in foul trouble. Close game. Who will be the happier? Or is it just going to be down to who can stay out of foul trouble in the fourth quarter? I think Manor House will be the happy of the two teams and in that first quarter it looked like it could have been a blowout so to get back into it was a big plus for them but uh, I think now Crosser Bridge have a lot more work to do going into the fourth when it comes to managing fouls. They may only have uh, one play or they have two players now in four but they have a lot of players on three so it's going to be dangerous for both teams. So at the end of the third quarter of the Sunday 16B final it's Crosser Bridge 39, Manor House 37.
The fourth quarter ready to get underway. Two point lead for Colossal Breedens and the 16B All Island Schools League final. All Island and the 16B. Back in the game for Manor House. For the scoring pair of Madeline Duplo and Emily Brady. Both on four fouls. And a great start for the quarter of Emily Payne with a long range two. She ties the game. Paul, both teams going with all of their main guns, even though they're in foul trouble. As we've got a three point shot there from Katie Flanagan. So I suppose all have to be very careful now in the early stages of this quarter. Yeah, and uh, for both coaches, should be telling your players to drive at those players with the fouls. Either they're going to have to back off um, and let you blow by, or they're going to have to try to make contact, and there's a chance they can at the foul. And Duplo. Grabs consecutive rebounds there and puts the second one in. Back to a one point lead. Seven minutes to go. O'Keefe. Oh, call for travel. No, we've not called end line. And Duplo is certainly there. I think they did call that on 10, did they? Oh. Yeah, that's her gone. And that's a tough call for Duplo. Right after scoring her basket. Not bad defensive position either, but they'll be careful. Nice drive again, but can't finish from O'Keefe. Grab their own rebound and put in by Yusuf. Juliana Young, this time her turn to get to the basket with nice steps through. Can't finish. Grabs her board, but stolen away by Katie Flanagan. Flanagan all the way to the basket, but can't make the layup. And it'll be tipped out of bounds and be Manor House ball. It'll be interesting to see now how Manor House reacted losing Dupla and how they set up this offense without her on the floor and if they can still get them offensive rebounds that they've been working off all day. Emily Payne with a three. Doesn't go. Nice kick from O'Keefe. Back to the hands of Flanagan. To O'Keefe for three. That was in and out. Rebounded by Brady. Nice pass forward. Beautiful pass straight into the hands of a cut in Young. Great pass, great basketball. We're back to a one point game. Ma to Captain Dunn, Dunn inside to Yusuf. Yusuf can't finish, rebounded by Allen and a rather soft jump ball there. But it will be a jump ball on the possession arrow. It'll be close to breed ball. Dunn to Flanagan, into the corner for open three for O'Keefe. That's gonna bounce out of bounds. It'll be Manor House ball, trailing by one with 5.22 to go. It's under 16B, All Island School League final. At Putta, she's going to have to be the inside threat now for Manor House. Three point shot goes up from Brady. Good block at the basket there for Dunn. Flanagan to O'Keefe. O'Keefe can't finish, but well rebounded by Alison Mark. High off the glass by Dunn. And this time, Manor House have numbers as Emily Payne goes to the hoop. Can't finish at the basket. Cross the breed, come right back, maybe got away with an extra step there. And we're gonna get a timeout as that basket counts and Chris Reed wants to talk things over. They trail by three, 46-43.
So, three point game. Manor House trail. They were down by 17 in the first half. That three point is not going to go. O'Keefe with a chance to add to that, and she does. So, a five point lead for Kloster Breed. Paul, what's the key to getting back into the game here for Manor House now they've lost Duplo? They're going to have to try uh, get Akutar involved in the game. She has to get a little bit more aggressive and get them rebounds that uh, Dupla was getting for them. They also need to try to get more scores out of uh, Julianne Young. Uh, she's been quiet in the terms of scoring and just hasn't been able to get a lot of, of her open shots. But Great pass by aforementioned player Young into the hands of Payne. Keeps them in touch here. Three points down. With a foul on Payne. It's going to be her first foul. And checking into the game here. For Cross the Breed. It was Yusuf coming out and back into the game with Sarah Bullock. She sat out the last seven or eight minutes here on four fouls. And go Keith gets it to Buller. Buller wastes no time in making a mark of the game. She adds two and five point lead for Close to Breed. 326 to go. Here is Young. To Brady. Brady finds a bit of space going to the basket. That one bobbles in. Nice shot from Emily Brady. Keeps them in touch, trailing by three. Rebounded by Rachel Allen off the missed miss from Avine Dunn. 3.03 to go. Young to Brady, open for three. She's going to let it go. I think that was probably touched there on the way up. Brady does a good job of getting a hand on the ball. Just knock it out of bounds, but it will remain close to breed ball. 2.49 to go. Paul, an exciting finishing hand here. Yeah, definitely. And uh, for close to breed, just they want to get that uh, lead over three points because with uh, Brady on the floor, you just never know where she's going to come up and have a score from. There's a foul there by Akputa, and the basket is good. Katie Flanagan, so the lead is up to five with a free throw to come. Good rebound and score for Abby O'Keefe. That puts it to seven and worrying times here for Kloster, uh, for Manor House here. They've got a foul, but the basket won't count here for Julia Young. And that's five fouls on Sarah Bullock. And we're going to get a timeout here for Manor House. They want to talk things over. Trailing 54-47 with 2.28 to go. So, 2.28 to go in the 16B girls. All Island Schools League final. Three from Brady. And she's fouled in the act of shooting. And Paul, that's probably the route back for Manor House at this point, is it? 
Yeah, and I'm very surprised. Um, a lack of concentration there coming out of the time out from Gloucester Bridge that they left the probably best three point shooter on the court wide open from three right in the corner. So um, that, that's something they really have to watch if they want to continue that lead and uh, win this final. And that's Ema Quinn fouled out as well for Gloucester Bridge. So they've just lost Sarah Buller and Ema Quinn. Madeline Duplo already gone for Manor House on five fouls. <laughs> Great composure from the foul line there from Brady. She knocked down all three and we're back to a four point game. Still plenty of time, 2.20 to go. Inside to O'Keefe. Flanagan will take a three doesn't go but rebounded by Dunn and they're going to jump ball and on possession now it'll be Manor House ball so Juliana Young trailing by four high screen from Matt Punta Young oh that one looked in from our angle just bounced off the back and rebounded by Ma. Nearly stolen away by quick hands from Young, but gets to the floor. We're going to get a jump ball, and it's going to be Colossa Breed ball. 153 to go. O'Keefe for Colossa Breed, leading by four. Done, all the way to the basket, beautiful finish with a left hand off the glass and a six point lead. And Manor House need quick scores here, 140 to go. A nice pass inside. I put the count finish, but Allen gets the rebound. She's well blocked by Quint. We're going to get our third jump ball in the space of 30 seconds. It'll be Manor House ball, but they need scores here, ball quickly. Yeah, they probably want to be looking for uh, Brady off this here, see if they can get a three, or uh, a Puktar coming off looking for an easy score inside, but they need something fairly quickly. Not what the doctor ordered there, we've got a missed shot, so it's down to 122. And clock on the side of Klosha Bree, they led by 17 in the first quarter, but an outstanding comeback just for half time by Manor House, had us tied at 29 apiece at half time. The fouls have proved costly for Manor House, they picked up a lot in the second half after Closter Breed getting a lot in the first half. And leading by six, one six, uh, 114 to go, sorry, as O'Keefe drives baseline. O'Keefe to the basket, and she's fouled by Akputu, and that's her fifth foul, so she has to take a seat as well. An eight-point game, Klosh to Breed, Paul, very much looking the ascendancy here. Yeah, and I think um, I kinda, one thing that's really kind of stood out for me is the management going into the uh, fourth quarter. They started uh, Manor House with uh, both Brady and uh, Dupla, even though they were both on fourth fouls, and Dupla ended up falling out very quickly in the fourth. <laughs> While with O'Keefe, uh, he had... He had Bula on four fours, sat her for the first few bets, then brought her on. She got a nice score and ended up uh, fouling out later on. Big three point shot from Juliana Young just keeps Manor House in with a sniff as we take under one minute to go. But O'Keefe, who's been exceptional in the second half, gets the basket, can't finish. Yusuf doesn't get it, and Young grabs the rebound. 50 seconds to go, they trail by six. Brady, she's going to let that one go. And it's just finished short. 40 seconds to go. They're down two possessions here. They need to make something happen. Just about gets away with the travel here. Nice drive inside from Flanagan. And she's fouled. She'll go to the line for two shots as Rachel Allen grabs her on the arm. That'll be her second personal foul. 
actually not on Allen, it's gone on Victoria Leader. <laughs> 25 seconds to go. Trailing by six at the moment. So they need a couple of quick threes here. But they'll get a chance on Criminal. They've let the rebound go. And we've got another foul here. This one is going to go on Rachel Allen. Twenty two point seven seconds to go. Eight point lead. And we're gonna get a timeout from Manor House. They won't talk it over, they trail by eight. Okay, 22 seconds to go, Manor House trailings. Don't forget, still to come, 12.30 tip-off, the under-19 B girls final, St. Patrick's Academy Dungannon versus St. Thomas, Com Colm Silas CS from Knockloin. Paul, tough work for Manor House here, but still in with a sniff just about. Yeah, they need to get a quick shot off here if they're going to have a chance of uh, coming back. That, that's a good pass out. Yeah, there's a foul there, and has that probably been the story of the game for Manor House? Too many e uh, missed opportunities inside? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think when Manor House uh, finish this game today, they're, they're really going to be kicking themselves, especially in the first quarter. A lot of uh, easy baskets they miss, a lot of free throws they miss, um, and a lot of things that could have had them maybe in a comfortable lead going into the fourth if they just finished around the basket a bit better and finished the free throw. The free throw is good with 12.2 seconds to go. So Paul, Klosha Breed had a fantastic start. What have they been so good that's impressed you for uh, to win this title if they do their, finish this off? Their guards have been fantastic. Um, you know, Katie Flanagan, Abby O'Keefe, uh, just fantastic in the fast break transition, getting their hands to everything and being a nuisance on defense. Um, I think they were well coached going into the uh, going into the fourth, managing their team fouls well. And like an early celebration here, there's still point six left on the on the court. So the girls just have to hold on for just under a second to go. We'll walk down the floor and it'll be Avine done. The captain started off the scoring in the game, I believe, and she'll have a chance to finish things off. 2.30 tip-off on the 19B boys final. Colossal Roskelgi versus St. Patrick's Armagh. And then 3.30 tip-off on the 16C girls final. St. Nathan's, St. Nathie's against Kinsale. She's done, can't make the second, but it's not gonna matter. As her team storms the court. And it's Kalosh de Bree that have won this under 16 B All Island School League final on a scoreline of 64 to 53. Final word for Paul. Paul, well deserved win there. 
Yeah, I think so. I think they uh, were fantastic from start to finish today. They had a bit of a blip in the second and let Manor House back into it, who uh, had a great game as well. But I think just outside shooting and the, the fast breaks from Gloucester Bridge uh, just sells them through. So we'll let you enjoy the presentation here. We'll be back with you very shortly, only about 10 minutes until the next game tips off, 12.30, a long game that one. So join us for that one. But for now, congratulations to Kloster Breed. <laughs> 